Hello, how's it going guys? Thank you for watching. For this video, I'm going to attempt to boost my reading speed in 10 days. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I make videos where I challenge myself to be better. If you want to follow my progress or maybe even try some of the challenges for yourself, then consider subscribing. With that being said, let's get started. I want to start out by saying that I used to hate reading. In fact, I hated reading so much that I try to avoid it for most of my life. But I've always admired people that can read, like my wife that can go from uh, cover to cover in a couple hours of any book, pretty much. And I'm starting to see that a little bit in my daughters, where they love to pick up books even before they can read. They just like opening it up and going through the pictures, if anything. But recently, as I begin to look at different areas of my life where I think I can improve, I realized that I had a lot of learning to do. And although YouTube has been a large part of how I learn, I always kind of deep down inside felt I needed to use books. Two years ago, I started to pick up books to teach myself personal finance, how to run a business. But even then, a lot of the books that I looked at were through Audible. And even though I admire people that can read books and I've always wanted to read books, I think the biggest challenge was being a slow reader. It takes me so long just to cover a small book. So that was a big motivator for this video, is a way to challenge myself and become a better reader, a faster reader. Not just to be fast, but also to be able to comprehend more of the things that I'm reading. And so for the next 10 days, I'm gonna use this book right here. 10 days to faster reading to be able to read faster comprehend more okay so the rules are simple right now i'm going to take a speed reading test online and i'm going to take a small quiz that's going to determine the percentage of comprehension that i get and i'm going to record how many words per minute i can read and also the comprehension level and then starting tomorrow i'm going to read this book and every day follow the instructions of the book. And then hopefully in day 10, I'll be able to double or even triple my reading speed. So now I'm gonna take this test and here we go. All right guys, so after day one, I had a couple of comments on it. It talked about how most people feel inadequate about their reading speed, so which is exactly how I feel, uh, especially when I did the test. And as you saw, I averaged about 140 words per minute. The highest level of reading, I only comprehended 50%, where the other ones, I was at 100%, but again, a very slow reading speed. What I like about this book so far is that on that first chapter, it talks about the reasons, or basically what goes through my mind when I'm reading. I kind of get distracted and start daydreaming or I finish a couple sentences and then I realize that I don't understand what it was saying so I have to go back and read it again which is exactly what I feel is a problem is that I definitely go back too many times and then I also uh, I didn't realize that by reading every single word it actually slows me down because uh, apparently when you speak you speak at about 150 to 200 words per minute and so when I vocalize every word as I'm reading that's one of the first things that slows me down because I'm basically reading at speaking speeds they do offer a couple of speeds tests and a comprehension test on the book and the first one I managed to read at 160 words per minute but I only uh, comprehended 50% of it. That was meant to speed up the reading and uh, hopefully uh, try to uh, maintain the comprehension, but uh, obviously it didn't work. I read a little bit faster, but also wasn't able to retain as much of the information. This first chapter does introduce you to pacers, which uh, you can either use like a pen to uh, track your uh, reading, or what I decided to use for that first chapter is uh, a index card, which they do mention that most people uh, tend to hold a card uh, on the text below and so that basically blocks your peripheral from being able to see the text below that and uh, it almost forces you to backtrack and so by flipping the card so that you cover the text that you've seen it allows you to be able to uh, process the information that's below the text quicker because you don't have to worry about you know moving the card down if that made sense. All right, so that was chapter one, day one, and from uh, this point till tomorrow, what I'm gonna do is just pick up novels. Uh, I'm not really good with stories, so it's probably the, the best thing for me to practice on. So the practice now is to try to read faster and not worry so much about comprehension, but just being able to scan through and recognize each word. So I'll do that uh, for a little bit, and then I'll check back with you guys tomorrow.
Hey guys, so it's been four days since I last updated you, but that's just because I've been kind of busy. In fact, I should be editing right now, but I wanted to get this out of the way. And so let me start with day two. The main point that I got out of uh, day two or chapter two is all the bad habits that we do while we read. With the top three being uh, when your mind wanders, uh, also vocalizing the words and regression, meaning you read a, a certain uh, sentence or paragraph or whole page and you feel like you didn't comprehend everything so you go back. And the book points out that you won't be able to eliminate all these but you can uh, try to minimize them as much as possible. So that's what I've been trying to do as, I, as I've been reading, trying to practice, trying to go faster. I'm trying to stay focused and keep my eyes on the pages, keep my mind on the words, and then just continue to uh, go at a faster rate uh, without having to go back, trying not to uh, think of every single word, but more of the main words. So all of the the and ands and all that, I just kind of skip right through it. Uh, you'd be surprised how fast you can actually process a word when it's flashed in front of you. Which brings me to a couple of the apps that I've been using to supplement this uh, practice. One is simply called Speed Reading and the other one Speed Reading Coach. Uh, I like Speed Reading because it has uh, basically games, uh, ways that you can practice. First it guides you through all the different games and then it lets you pick which one you want to use to practice with. And there's different things in there that kind of try to focus on your peripheral vision and trying to be able to scan and look for the right answer or the right number in this situation or it flashes a, a set of numbers in front of you and you try to rem memorize those and plug those in. I like that one because it's a little bit more professional looking, there's a lot of more options but the uh, speed reading coach is not very advanced but I like that it has uh, reading material that will flash uh, word by word. They call it a word runner and you can choose the speed. So whether you start out at 140 words per minute like I did or you can bump it up to as many as a thousand something. And uh, the idea is to progressively get better at recognizing and not necessarily vocalizing the word in your head but just seeing it and immediately recognizing the meaning and moving on to the next word. I've been able to get it up to about 400 before I start losing some of that comprehension but it's crazy how flash it just flashes in front of you and then you still be able to recognize it and put the sentence together. So that's something that I recommend since I've been doing it. It feels like it's helping me comprehend uh, words at a faster rate. Every chapter has a speed reading challenge and so on this one I read it in two minutes which means 200 words per minute but my comprehension on this one was 60% so it was a little lacking. I think I was pushing a little too much. There is an analogy on the book. It's pretty much all about uh, kind of driving car analogy but the one that I like the best is uh, if you're somebody who started driving in an automatic and then uh, somewhere, you know, a couple few years later you decided to start driving standard, you know how to drive automatic and so when you decide to drive standard that doesn't mean that you forgot how to drive it just means you have to get used to this new system of driving but the driving part the muscle memory for driving is still there it's just the uh, this new part is challenging in the beginning but with practice you get better and better what they're saying is that when you go from regular reading speed to speed reading you still know how to read you still know the words and can comprehend the sentences but you're changing the system in the beginning when you change that system it's going to be a little bit overwhelming so as you're trying to see these words flash in front of you, your brain is gonna uh, basically go into overload and it's gonna try to keep up but it won't be able to. Practicing and doing it over and over again, it's gonna get a lot faster, it's gonna get a lot easier and uh, you'll be able to comprehend a lot more. So that's really one of the things that got me off of this chapter is that analogy. Chapter three really focus on a lot of the distractions when you read. So what some of the things that keep you from focusing and staying on the page and keep you from wandering uh, in your head, daydreaming and all that. And so what they do is they point out the most common distractions, which is noise, not being interested in the material, and being uh, preoccupied or trying to multitask, like trying to watch TV and read. That's just a recipe for uh, disaster right there. So what they're trying to get you to do is recognize what distracts you so that you're aware of them and you can uh, set an environment that is a lot easier for you to focus and a lot easier for you to work in. Some of the things that they mentioned is if you like listening to music while you read, uh, then maybe doing classical music or music with no lyrics like instrumentals might be a lot easier. It might make it easier for you to focus. Better yet, maybe not listening to music at all and just kind of try to stay focused on the book. That might also help. Obviously looking for a quiet place. That's my biggest issue because here in Waikiki everything is loud so I have to close everything. The room gets kind of hot. So being able to find a quiet place for me 
uh, it's difficult, so I just have to listen to uh, music. I do have noise canceling headphones, so I've been using those a lot recently. But they also talk about taking breaks, uh, setting a goal to read, whether it's pages, chapters, or time. And even though normally I like sitting down, relaxing while I read, I found that that makes me kind of tired. So one of the recommendations is to read in on a desk or a table, so I've been doing that a lot. It actually helps me with posture too, because uh, uh, I find that my back's been kind of in and out uh, this whole year. And so being able to sit down makes, uh, I still get tired, but it's more on my upper back instead of my lower back, which causes the most problems. And so that's been kind of helpful both on the reading part and also uh, just back issues. So for chapter three, I managed to read in two minutes, which is again, 200 words per minute. My comprehension went up to 70%, so that's good. So even though I didn't get faster, my comprehension went up. Another thing that they kind of focus on, making sure that you highlight only the important, either phrases or ideas. So highlighting a whole paragraph is just gonna make it a lot difficult for you to go back and try to reread your notes or kind of just scan through your notes. You're gonna have to read the whole paragraph instead of just some key words or phrases. And they recommend that instead of highlighting the whole paragraph, maybe doing a quick note on the side, on the margins. And so that way you can kind of put brackets so that you know you're talking about this paragraph in particular and then just the notes and so that's another thing that works I'm trying to take notes because I want to do reviews on my favorite books uh, but they recommend that if you don't really have to retain the information if this is just for pleasure if you're just trying to practice and kind of uh, get the information like if it's a magazine or something like that then avoid taking notes and just kind of go through it it makes it a lot easier it makes it feel like less like work and more like a uh, pleasure I guess more like uh, something fun to do for day four, the biggest thing that I got from it is just being able to focus on key words. And I mentioned it a little bit before, but uh, as you're reading, you want to be able to get faster and faster. And instead of vocalizing each of the words, just focus on the big ideas. So if you see a bigger word, that's probably the one that you want to uh, vocalize. And then the rest just kind of flash through them. It sounds like your brain is not going to be able to handle it. Uh, and there's a point to where it won't, but if you kind of slowly build up to that, uh, at least in my experience so far, I've been able to go faster and faster and, and uh, actually been, been able to understand uh, what all the lines are. It's pretty crazy. It's basically like when you skim a chapter and you're pretty much just focusing on the titles or the bold words or the margins. And so that's what you're doing, but now you're doing all the little uh, text. Uh, you're trying to look at the big words as you're going through. Did that make sense? I hope that makes sense. But that's the main idea. Don't vocalize every single word on that line. I did do the speed test on day four, uh, but I, to be honest, I'm kind of confused. I don't know if I did it right. The first time it said 275 words per minute. The next time it said 333 words per minute. So uh, I'm not sure. I, I did reread it, which they tell you not to do, but um, I think I did it the right way. Seems like a big jump from 200 to 279 or 333, uh, but that's what I got. So I don't know, maybe it's just enough practice that, uh, that I'm getting better. Yeah. So I was surprised too. Day five for me was uh, like, a, like, oh, okay. It filled in the gaps a little bit for me because this whole time, you know, you're, I'm trying to read faster and I'm trying to comprehend more but you, your brain still has trouble kind of catching up. And so uh, I was kind of wondering if I was gonna be the right person to be able to speed read or if it was just maybe not meant for me, I don't know. When I got to day five, it made me realize that, oh, okay, so that's how you do it. Day five talks about skimming or pretty much previewing the book. And so what you're doing is you get the book that you uh, intend to read and uh, just to make sure that it's something that's gonna benefit you and you don't get to half of the book and then you're like, oh, I'm just wasting my time. Uh, they recommend that you preview the book. So you go through, uh, look at the covers, front and back cover, look at the index, uh, look at all the titles, each page, about a second per page, and you're looking for the main points, the main ideas. It's basically building the map for you to be able to comprehend better. So uh, the analogy is that if I tell you, hey, we're going to a party later on, I'll meet you there. And if you don't know the address, if you don't know the directions or how to get there, then it's gonna be very frustrating for you. You're not gonna know how long it's gonna take. You're not gonna know, uh, you know where to make a left, where to make a right, where you speed up, where you slow down, any of that stuff. So it's gonna be a lot more frustrating and less enjoyable. But if you preview or skimp the book first, 
from cover to cover, you will have a general idea of what the book's about. You will know the main points and basically where to pay attention, which parts of the book are gonna be the most interesting to you. So therefore you can slow down and maybe focus more on those. And then when you go to a paragraph or a chapter that maybe is not relevant to what you're trying to learn, you can either skip it completely uh, if it doesn't apply to you, or you can just speed read through that and try to get the general idea and move on to the next chapter. So that right there uh, made a lot of sense to me. It just happened there on that same day. I saw a YouTube video that if I remember, I'm gonna put a link down below. There's a guy that says that he had a speech impediment and can now read, because he practiced so much, 1,700 words per minute. So for me, that seemed like crazy impossible. If I'm struggling at 400, I don't know how you can do it at 1,700. But he started talking about not just previewing the book, but also pre-reading the book. So he basically ran through the books three times. And the first time is one second per page. You're just kind of flipping through, looking for main ideas, cover to cover, done. Okay, so now you have a roadmap in your head. Now you know what to expect, whether you're gonna enjoy it or not. And then you go about 30 seconds per page, skimming through maybe the first couple of sentences of each paragraph. You're going through and now you have a little bit more meat on the bone and now you know, okay, this is a chapter right here is for me, this chapter maybe not so much. And then you do a speed reading. And so when you do that, when you do that final speed reading, you already read it twice, pretty much. So you already know what the content is. You're just going through and focusing on the ones that is relevant to you or what you want to learn or what whatever questions you have. When you build that roadmap, they get answered. So by the time you get to the end of the book, you don't have any questions. Any lingering questions have been answered because you skipped through it and then you, uh, you pre-read it. Uh, and all those questions that popped up got uh, answered when you did the speed reading. I hope that made sense, but if I confuse it, just uh, check down on the description and I'll put the link to that video. And so for day five, I read the speed reading test uh, and I got 975 words per minute. So what we did for that one is we actually skimmed and or previewed chapter six and then checking how long it took us to do that. We will get these uh, word, words per minute. And so this for me, it was the eye opener where, okay, so if I skimmed through that whole thing and I understood, I was able to get 80% comprehension at 975 words per minute. So that's when the light bulb went on and I'm like, okay, so that's how they do it. So the whole preview and skimming through the book twice before you actually speed th read through it, uh, it's gonna get that comprehension way up there. So after day five, I decided to start grabbing some books from the library, just kinda use them for practice and also kickstart my whole reading journey. I started out easy, so we're going to California for the winter and we wanted to go to Legoland and then maybe after Legoland, we go to San Diego for a day or two. And so I got this one. All of this is the photos San Diego. And so I, I started practicing my pre-reading, my skimming, and then also my uh, speed reading and uh, I was able to get uh, all the way to the, pretty much the last part of the book before I got sleepy. We're in Hawaii, so going to San Diego for the beach doesn't make sense, so I skipped those. We're probably only gonna do uh, Legoland because it's gonna wear out my daughters, so we're most likely not gonna do San Diego Zoo and all those other kind of theme parks. So I skipped through those, and I really just focused on the sightseeing, the free stuff, the museums, the photo places, maybe like the, the scenic places, that's what I meant to say. I pretty much have it all planned out now and it took me a couple hours to do that. All right guys, so today's day 10 and for some reason I lost uh, some of the video from uh, day five. So I'm gonna finish up day five. Tips that you can do uh, health-wise to become a better reader. The first one is get enough sleep. It's really hard to stay focused and re retain information when you're tired. Also be active, so move around, get your blood flowing, maybe like 30 minute periods because it helps with comprehension of somehow it helps you focus. Also they talk about eating brain food, so like omega-3s and trying to avoid carbs and make you sleepy, which kind of go hand in hand with my channel a little bit. And trying to reduce stress uh, it's a big factor, especially for me, because when I read, there's so many things going on in my head that I, I've got to do this, I gotta do that, that having that kind of stress keeps you from concentrating and focusing on the material or what you're reading. For day six, the book talks about 
uh, being an active reader, you're actively coming up with questions and trying to uh, find the answers to those questions. Not only does that help you retain information, but it also helps you answer any questions that you might have. For day six, I got 200 words per minute and 70% accuracy on the test, which is the same as day three, but way below uh, day four and five. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but that's, that's what I got. But it's still above what I started with. Day six also gave me some tips on how to read material that's not necessarily interesting to me. The first one that stood out to me was uh, writing jargon down. So anything you don't understand about the subject or words you don't know, just kind of make a note about them. Later on, maybe you can dive a little deeper into that. Also, starting with a material that's a little bit simpler. So maybe if you're interested in something that's a medical condition, maybe not go straight to the journals, but try to st start with uh, you know a Wikipedia page, something that's a lot less complex, so that when you do get to the medical journals, it's a lot easier for you to comprehend. Day seven talks a little bit more about why people kind of uh, get behind on their reading. Uh, with me, I don't really have to read so much for my job. I'm a photographer, so it's a lot better for me to go out and shoot and try to get better that way and figure out what mistakes I'm making than trying to read a book about it. I have read books about photography, both on the business side and on the technical side, but to me, it's really not a mandatory thing. I do enjoy learning, and so right now, my biggest motivation to read is to learn more and to become you know, better, as I mentioned. But they do talk about some of the reasons that people kind of get behind on the reading, with some of them being feeling like you need to to read something because of your career or because of something that you're trying to achieve. People trying to read every single word and feeling guilty of uh, skipping or scanning. And one of the bigger ones is uh, feeling like you have to remember everything. They emphasize trying to remember things that you're going to use in the future not necessarily something that's just good to know but easy to forget. Trying to remember everything is uh, something that slows people down. They also talk about tips on how to find time to read and uh, the biggest one that stood out to me was uh, keeping a journal so that you track your day and then try to look for 10-15 minutes of space as you go throughout the day and uh, you know always carrying a book with you so that during those parts of the day you can pull out the book or a magazine and then read through that. For the reading test on this chapter I went up to 240 words per minute but I only retain 40%, which is uh, one of those things where, you know, it's kind of give and take. I can read it faster if I want, but then that, that comprehension is gonna drop, or I can read slower, which is gonna take me more time to read, but my comprehension goes up. So trying to find that balance and slowly improving on both, uh, that's, that's really what I'm looking at right here. For day eight, it seemed like it was reviewing a lot of the book a lot of the other days. And so at first I was kind of getting, not bored, but losing interest. But then they get to the part where they break down skimming, scanning, and then skipping. And so those three, even though they talked about it before, it really brought all the concepts together. The skipping part was the one that kind of really stood out for me because I am one of those that feels like I have to read every single word to get the value out of the book, including the preface. And so I think I've burned a lot of time trying to read through each part of the book, even when it's irrelevant to me. This one right here, it really talks about having the confidence to know that when to skip a certain part and when not to skip. But that, again, go, comes with practice, figuring out uh, what's filler in the book and what's uh, actual substance. Like I just mentioned, and the beginning of it was pretty much filler because it was reviewing all the previous uh, topics. But then once it got towards the end, I realized, okay, this seems interesting to me. And so that's when I kind of slowed down and try to get a little bit more focus on it. And uh, yeah, I mean, it really opened up my eyes about and not feeling like I have to read every single word and every single portion part of the book. For this chapter, instead of uh, reading, it was more like a scanning uh, exercise. And so they give you 10 questions and you gotta scan through some information and be able to answer those questions. That took me three minutes, 10 seconds, and I got 100% of them right. Uh, they say anything under three minutes is uh, good. And so I was just a little bit over that. I'm, I'm okay with it. And I just wanna read this quote uh, before I move on. And it kind of goes back a little bit to having the confidence to know when to skip. And it says, there is more than enough reading material to last a lifetime. And your job is to quickly find what is most valuable to you. That's the big one right there. That's really what drew, drew me in through that last chapter. It really is looking for what brings you value, not necessarily just reading for the sake of reading. They did have a reading exercise. And for that one, I got 300 words per minute. It's 70% comprehension. So that's obviously improving from the last ones. 
uh, and it wasn't a skipping exercise or scanning exercise, it was a legit reading. And so that kind of gave me a little bit of a uh, confidence boost. I think day nine really explains why this uh, video that I'm making for you guys is uh, beneficial, not just for you guys uh, to be able to kind of get a review of the book, but also to me because they talk about ways that you can retain information aside from being an active uh, reader where you're asking questions and answering them as you go. Uh, but also once you're done with the reading, uh, so some of the uh, strategies here is talk about it, which is what I'm doing here in this video. Read more about it. When it comes to something that's uh, like photography, for example, uh, then just reading more and talking about it and practicing, it's, uh, it's really big to retain in that information. Applying it, so obviously I do photography, so that's a way that I'm applying that information. Sharing it, when somebody comes up to me and asks me questions about photography and I share it with them. You can also listen to material that's uh, relevant to what you're learning. You can watch videos on that material and then you can always take a class. Uh, in photography, I only really took one class and it was in film and it covered more about the developing uh, part of uh, photography, not so much about the composition. That particular class to me wasn't really a big uh, game changer other than the fact that one of my classmates got a job for a photography company and then that's how I became a professional because uh, she referred me. So even though the class itself didn't really teach me much, the fact that I went there with people that were interested in the same subject uh, and retain the friendship and that kind of helped me in the future. The last point on day nine is they talk about uh, being able to learn more words and I think that's what, what I struggle with the most. I know that my vocabulary is very limited. I know I'm, I'm not as articulate as I want to be. I struggle with words a lot. I always find myself stuttering through the words, trying to find the right word. In this chapter they talk about trying actively to learn new words, whether it's writing them down, uh, words that you don't know, or maybe looking for a material that maybe is a little bit uh, higher on your reading level, so that that way uh, you manage to up not only your reading game, but also your knowledge, your word knowledge and all that. So I don't know if that made sense, but that really stood out to me. On the reading test for this one, I got 240 words per minute at 80% comprehension. That's pretty good, I think. And now to the last day, day 10. I don't think I mentioned, but on day one, they uh, ask you what type of reader you are. And they mentions that a lot of people, the first uh, thing they say is I'm a slow reader, I'm a lazy reader, you know, a lot of negative words. And so they kept asking each chapter what type of reader you were. And the first thing that popped in my head when uh, they asked it on chapter 10 was that I was a motivated reader. I've always wanted to be able to read uh, faster, better but this time I actually feel motivated to do that. So I, got, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see in the back, but I got about five books from the library. I have about three weeks before I need to return them and I want to finish those uh, books uh, by then. So uh, it seems a little bit overwhelming, I think, but I should be able to get uh, most of it done. I'm gonna be confident, I'm gonna get all of them done. The biggest thing that stood out for me in day 10, chapter 10, was uh, looking for motivational speakers. So people that kind of motivate you to just keep going because there's so many times where I started challenging my head and it sounds exciting and it seems like something that I can do and it's gonna uh, help me be better and all that. And then I get started, one, two days into it, I'm already kind of losing interest, I'm kind of like burning out. And so being able to find motivational speakers, people that inspire you, that's gonna really help you maintain this, this, uh, this arc of, uh, of trying to achieve or acquire new knowledge. And so I think that's a really good tip in general, just for anybody that wants to be better and do more, I definitely recommend looking for people in your field that, you, that can motivate you, help you not just learn, but keep you motivated. The last test, I got 300 words per minute at 80% comprehension, so that's pretty good. Uh, I wanted to end on a good note. So obviously there were up and downs throughout the book. Uh, I wanna put the words per minute and the comprehension rate here on the side, uh, so you guys can kinda see the difference. And right after this, before I give you guys my final thoughts, uh, I'm gonna take the online test again. So let's do that right now.
So even though the results aren't really scientific, it does kind of paint a picture of how I can gain reading speed, uh, but at the same time, maybe not necessarily maintain comprehension or even uh, lose on the comprehension. I didn't really expect anything crazy, but I'm glad to see some type of improvement. Uh, just because it shows that it's possible and then I just got to work on uh, finessing that formula of getting faster while still maintaining comprehension. I am glad that I did this challenge, that I found this book because it does make me feel like I can get faster, I can get better, I can probably maintain comprehension if I just be careful and then I take it slow. For the time being, as I've been practicing reading books and magazines, I do still find it a little challenging. Most of the time, even though I can see and comprehend each and every word, uh, I find it difficult to be able to put the sentence together because it's going so fast but it has gotten easier. When it comes to a small paragraph, I can pretty much just go right through it and comprehend pretty much everything that is being said. But all this really reminds me of when I first started shooting. And I remember I was training with uh, photographers that have been doing it for years, and I would just be amazed at how fast they would move their fingers, change the settings without even looking at the display. They would change their body angle, camera angle, while directing the couple, making sure that people cleared in the back or there was nothing distracting on the back. There's so much going on, it made me feel uncomfortable kind of scared that I was never going to be able to do what they were doing but now nearly eight years later I find myself doing all those things without having to stop and think about them I just perform them because I do it so much so often that it just it's almost like muscle memory it is muscle memory so I'm hoping that this whole reading thing can get faster and faster and comprehension gets better and better as just I just try to practice I'll keep you guys updated on my speeds and how what's going on I plan to do a lot of uh, book reviews as I learn and as I try to get better uh, but let me know what you guys think about this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. I got a lot of videos coming up, so make sure you hit that bell so you get notified when those videos go up. I really appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.